Princess Islam. We are now about to conclude the best month of Ramadan. And all of us are feeling that it is just now we have started and now we are about to finish. It indicates that the time is moving very fast. And nothing to be strange about it. Because as the time is moving on, we are getting closer to the doomsday and it is well established hadith that Prophet ﷺ informed that when we go nearer to the day of judgment, the time will move faster. And the same thing is happening. So is it a good news or a bad news? Let's think about it later on and let's leave this question for you and let's th think about it later on inshallah <laughs> so the topic which i am about to speak about is the lessons learned from ramadan yes indeed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything with a reason and similarly allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obligated on us the types of worships for a reason and it has a clear and very strong message in it. Briefly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem, Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala al-lazina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. It is precisely mentioned that the very reason for having this fasting is that to attain the re attain the position of taqwa piousness to get the piousness so what is this piousness scholars have different definitions for it but to be very precise and to be very accurate i shall say that piousness is a very wide has a very wider scope it is to obey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of his commandments and to refrain from all those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden on us with an intention to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you see, here is the important thing. It starts with the intention from our heart and mind that we are going to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, we are keeping fasting, we are abstaining from food and all those sexual desires and whatever breaks our fast, from the down to the dusk, everything and each and every kind of worship we are performing is just to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the reason Allah, uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sumu li ru'yatihi wa afdiru li ru'yatihi. There is no logic that when we, uh, when we see the crescent of Ramadan, we start fasting. And when we see the crescent of Shawwal, we leave it. There is no reason I can establish here or nobody can establish strongly and profoundly. The only reason is to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obedience. It is the test of obedience. And it is the test of intention. Are we intending to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether we understand the reason or not? This is the question there. And we got a solution to a kind of paradox normally asked to the children that is is that the night before the day or the day before night very precisely we see the crescent and we start fasting so it says that the night comes before the day night is the announcement or the, pre or the pre is the preface to the day so night comes first this is the lesson and a general lesson we can derive from ramadan from shahar ramadan that is night comes first and then the day for all the acts of worship and all, all the acts of religion. This is the first thing. Very similarly, when we ponder upon the acts we perform during the uh, month of Ramadan, we notice that we started our fasting by having the feast of Suhoor and we left the fast or we break the fast by having the feast of Iftar. Suhoor and Iftar these two feast these two feast we have you see here is also a point that we have to obey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
whether we get the reason or not. Why is it that before the sun rises, I can eat and drink and perform whatever I want, and when the sun rises, it is forbidden on me? See, again the same message we can find in it, the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us that the re fasting is not just to leave or abstain from food and drink and all the sexual desires, but it has a moral aspect in it. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that مَن لَمْ يَدَعْ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ أَنْ يَدَعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ That whoever does not leave away lying and acting upon it, cheating the people, then there is no need of such a person to leave away the food, drink and sexual desires. Subhanallah. So you see, if we are just controlling ourselves and not behaving good with the people, then this is not the perfect level of perfect perfect uh, uh, level of iman we are not attaining we are not getting the reason why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to observe this fasting you see the second lesson i can derive is that morally we have to be good with our kinships morally we have to be good with the creature of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the second lesson i can derive similarly we can find that Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran, hudan lil nasi wa bayinatin min al-huda wal-Quran. That the month of Ramadan is one in which Quran is revealed. For what? What is the purpose of revelation of Quran? Hudan lil nasi wa bayinatin min al-huda. A guide, a guidance for the people and having the clear signs of guidance in it so the reason of reciting the quran is not to just have a good tone in our uh, in our ears no it is not the purpose yes verily the per person who has faith in his heart enjoys listening to the quran but it is not just if we enjoy listening to the, to the quran the matter is done or the object is achieved no my dear brother it, the message is that that is we have to look upon and we have to ponder how the guidance is there for it, for me because in Quran itself it is well established that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in this book you will find your mention subhanallah my mention your mention yes we do have وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا All those ayahs are those things which are defining the qualities of a believer. You see, so these ayahs and all the other ayahs, because the whole Qur'an is meant for us, we have to assess ourselves. We have to assess and decide that whether we are fulfilling the requirements which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set forth for us, we have to look into it. It's not just for this thing. So the great reminder and the great thing which this whole month is bringing to us is that pondering upon the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not for in this holy month of Ramadan alone but in other days as well. We have to have a routine of it. We have to ponder upon, this, upon the ayahs of Quran in our daily life. Let it be one or two ayahs. Doesn't matter. But the thing is that we have to have a schedule, we have to have a kind of timetable to follow up the Quran and ponder upon it. Ponder upon it. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Islam has set up certain uh, certain way to organize ourselves in our whole life. That's why we find that prayers are a reminder for us. Similarly, the Jumu'ah, big congregation, there we got the chance to interact with the community, wider community and ponder upon where we are heading towards. Remind each other. Believer, men and women are friends to each other. In what way the friendship is? Friendship is to, to order each other about good 
and ask each other to be away from the bad, enjoying the good and forbidding the bad. That's our duty. So this is the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said precisely as in a in a tone of imtinan, in a tone of award, that this is the month when Quran is revealed. And that's why we see that during the Qiyamul Layl, we most of us try to complete the whole Quran. Why? That the reason again is that to remind us whether we are fulfilling those things which are related to me or not. So we have to assess ourselves. Quran is the best base to assess our deeds, our characters and all those things which are going on in our life. So this is the third message. I can derive it from it. The third and the final message or the, the last message and last and final message with which I want to conclude towards today's talk is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran لِتُكْمِلُ الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ that is the whole season is for what? For glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For لِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ That is for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enabled you to do. Subhanallah. This word عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ Attributing the ability to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing that how weak are we. By ourselves we can't do anything. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. The same message that we by ourselves we don't have the enough power and we don't have the enough determination to do good things and not to be away from the bad things. It is from the ability of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that Allah is enabling us. That's why we are performing the good. And لتكبر الله على ما هداكم ولتكمل العيد تا. And we have to complete the whole month. While observing the fasting, and here is also a, 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 a disguised message in it. That is, sometimes the months tend to be of 29 days, and while the other time it is 30 days, we have to follow the rule of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Sumu li ruyatihi wa afthiru li ruyatihi, as defined by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We don't know whether we are going to fast for 29 days or 30 days, but still. We have to complete the whole days, and moreover, th there is a kind of relaxation in it. That is, if somebody miss misses out some days due to some valid reason, I don't want to go into the details of what are those valid reasons. If somebody misses that the siyam, then he can complete in other days. So there is a kind of relaxation. So the the whole religion is easy. So wali tuk 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 milul idda wali tuk. تُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ And the third and the final thing is that we should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that these are the reasons by which we have to be we have to be uh, feel cheerful and blessful. That is when we got the opportunities where we can increase in the rewards of Allah subhanahu rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I would like to conclude by saying that the remaining time is very short. Either the upcoming Friday or the Saturday, we are going to have the Eid or the first of Shawwal. So have, so just value the remaining time and work hard and strive hard and pay attention to the rest of the nights as well as the days by having the etikaf or having the night prayers don't fall behind because Ibn Rajab Rahimahullah says that when a racing horse get closer sorry Ibn Qayyim Rahimahullah says that when a racing horse get closer to the finish line it, it speed up the, its, its speed it add more to its speed just to finish it quickly so he says that by making an analogy he says that don't fall behind a racing horse or don't become worse than a racing horse we have to speed up because all the righteous predecessors salaf salihin are in agreement that al amalu bil khawatim that is the deeds are counted as they end up if we couldn't start it well 
then we should try to finish it well may allah forgive me you and all of us and enable us to do more good in the future things wa akhiru da'wana 'anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin So it seems that no questions are there. So let me ask you. If you are not asking, let me ask you then. So we know that you know, we had the blissful uh, event of Ramadan and the month of Ramadan. So if, from among the ahkam of Ramadan, rulings of Ramadan, it is that if somebody eats or drink while he is fasting due to forgetfulness, forgot that he is fasting, can you? It, uh, got, it slipped from his mind or her mind that he is fasting then he either he or she drink or eat then he has to complete his fasting why what's the reason is question clear to you to all of you 